There are five million homes in Britain provided at reduced rent through local councils. That's not what you would expect coming into a council property. Is that you're not really going to get much better. But four and a half million people are competing for the few vacancies that come up. So you ain't got no chance. What I'm in my head to give me a bigger house where I will live with my family. These people are hoping to get one of these properties. I like that one. It looks okay, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, that looks really nice. But which of them needs it the most? I've been issued an eviction notice. I've got to get out. I'm not asking for nothing spectacular. Just somewhere with enough space for us to actually start making a life for ourselves. People are having to wait an average of between five to six years. The system will decide who will get what they're looking for. I'm looking for especially a big kitchen. If I'm lucky enough, I might get it. Nineteenth <laughs> floor. Nineteenth oh. floor. Beggars can't be choosers, baby. Not all of these people will be given a home. There's going to be losers and there's going to be winners. There's a shortage of homes. This is the fact of life. This is what's happening in England. We can't help everyone. This East London Council housing office is under siege. Now, we're a nation of people of queue, aren't we? We are a nation of people of queue. And if we can see that that's a legitimate queue, as much as it's frustrating to be at the end of it, if we can see, A, that there's no one cutting in, and B, that we're moving slowly, there's a lot more tolerance. Tower Hamlets is one of the poorest and most overcrowded boroughs in the country. And the council faces a never-ending stream of people looking for a home. What I'm in my head to give me a bigger house where I will live with my okay, family. This and this and this one, they sleep on the same bed and they don't sleep all night. My wife have to push this all night. I'm sleeping on the floor. Do you know, I don't think it's unreasonable for somebody to say I'm in housing need. Can you, can you sort of address it, really? And I was told when I first joined the waiting list that it was only a five-year wait, and okay. I've been waiting ten. Yeah. Is it because of uh, she was white-skinned and we are Asian? And why did she get three million? Nothing to do with Why it. did she get three million? Is this there is no there? difference. Equally, it's not unreasonable for a local authority facing so many cuts. It has such a dense population and limited supply to say no. I'll say again, we do not take into consideration ages. Two children, same sex, share a room. I can't change that policy, we just implement them. There are 24,000 households queuing for a property. Council officers have the challenge of working out who's the most in need. Applicants that apply to the council's housing list are assessed, placed in the band. The band determines how urgent their housing application is. The bands are numbered one to four. Band one is the highest priority for emergencies, and band four for those who have the least urgent need. I wouldn't say to you that we would be, we would be able to rehouse you because we wouldn't. You're in the lowest band. We don't have any say over that. Central government has said this. We just administer it, i.e. we do the paperwork. In the average week, 60 more households join the waiting list. But only 40 properties become available to give out. Properties due to be advertised include this two-bedroom flat on the third floor of a 1930s council block, this three-bedroom house with garden, a rare find in inner London, and this brand-new three-bedroom flat provided by a not-for-profit housing association. All will be advertised at a rent of around one-third of the private market rate. Michael Kemp. Michael Kemp to interim 13, please. Mike Kemp is attempting to rebuild his life after a failed Far East property venture left him in financial ruin. Morning. Michael, yeah? Yes. Uh, just take a seat. Thank you. You are Mr? Uh, Moy, M O Y. Oh. Are you from Kenya? I'm not from Kenya, no. 
you you live in a housing association property, is it? Uh, yeah, supported housing, yeah. Supported housing. Hello there. Welcome. It's a bit, a bit of a tight squeeze. Come on in. Uh, this is my children's bedroom. My daughter and my son, they share a room. So my daughter sleeps down here on the, on the uh, lower side and my son sleeps up top. Mike has been placed in band two because his flat is overcrowded. It was intended for a single person, but Mike's family moved from the Philippines and there are now four of them in two small rooms. The most important thing is we're together. We're happy. Happy family again. We sleep in one roof again. This is the lounge. This is where we live. And so the family, really, we spend a lot of our time here. Uh, my daughter tends to do homework in there and everything, and we use all the space that we can. Um, which is fine, but uh, it doesn't, you know, it's, it's ridiculous, really. We should have a family area, you know. So if I may ask at this stage why you require house advice, because I've been, a, I've, been off, I've, been, I've been issued an eviction notice for overcrowding. I've got to get out. All right. Did you read the contract before you signed it, though? Yeah. OK, so you, obviously you were aware at the time that that particular accommodation, our supported housing, was only meant for you and you alone, yeah? Yes. Yeah. OK. Do you receive housing benefit or...? I receive child benefit and I receive some t child tax, tax credits. And the rent is? 600 and something. So let's say approximately 600 odd pounds. And my salary is just about the same, so I'm, I'm dying on my feet at the moment. OK. Have you tried to search for properties to rent in the private rented sector? Uh, yes, I have, but there's no way I can afford it. OK. I do appreciate your concerns about affordability and it's obviously going to be difficult if you decide to stick to Tar Hamlet. Thank you very much, Mr Moy. You're welcome. You're welcome. There are 9,000 other households with the same priority that Mike has. He has a few weeks before he's evicted to find a new home. What are his prospects of getting a property? Well, unfortunately, very, very bleak, though. It's, it's, it's not looking too good in the short term. There could be the possibility of a property becoming available. However, most of the clients we deal with tend to find it very difficult securing alternative accommodation, uh, either through their own efforts or through the council. <laughs> Each week, the available properties are advertised by the council. All those on the waiting list can go online and make an electronic bid. That's the new build that we see round here, round near my friend's house. Mm. It's a two-bed, three-person, two-bedroom, yeah. perfect for us, lifetime home, third flat, floor. third floor, new build. When a client places a bid, what they're actually doing is stating that they wish to be considered for the property that has been advertised. That is what a bid is, basically. So your request has been recorded, you will be contacted if you are successful. If two applicants from the same band bid for, an a, bid for a property, the, the applicant who's been in the band the longest will be offered the property. I'm not asking for nothing spectacular. I'm not, not really begging for a garden or, or a balcony or nothing like that. Just somewhere with enough space for us to actually start making a life for ourselves. As at the moment, we literally just live in a bedroom. In six weeks, Grant and Kimberly are expecting a baby. So they're assessed as overcrowded and waiting in band two. Until they can get a council property, they're forced to privately rent this single room. This is literally how it is, the door was like this when we moved into the property. We ain't been allowed to change it by the landlord. He said, if we do, we'll have to pay for it ourselves, but we don't see why we have to when we pay £420 a month rent for this small room. 
So we're um, stuck. We're stuck with this door without a lock, which is highly unsafe. Right. Oh, good boy. Um, I mean, I've, I, I have him here primarily because we're not allowed to change the doors. Like that he does keep a lot of the, the, the stuff in the room safe as well. Um, you know, he's you know he's quite friendly, but if, if someone he didn't know walked into the room, he would he would probably you know be quite protective. The bed's not made at the moment because we're having to change our sheets and wash them every day because we've just had the whole place treated for bed bugs. Well, they've been feeding on me. <laughs> but I mean, my partner helps me as much every as night. <laughs> my partner helps me as much as she can because she's pregnant. I mean, it looks very comfortable. I mean, but don't let looks deceive you. I mean, it literally is just like going camping for the last seven months. Grant and Kimberly have only been on the waiting list for four months. There are 2,000 families queuing for a two-bedroom property who all have the right to be served before them. We've bidded for 41 properties so far. From what they told us on the phone, we're probably going to look to at least bid for three to 400 plus properties before we even get a look in. We, we've just got to make the best of what we've got at the moment and just try to hope for the best, really. I mean, when she gets upset, it makes me upset. But, you know, there's a shortage of homes. And, you know, there's going to be losers and there's going to be winners. Unfortunately, with the system that we're facing at the moment, we are the losers. It just continues to bid, sir. He has to continue bidding, yeah? Every Friday, the system analyzes the bids for each available property and calculates who has come out on top. Licensed the house, you are 545. But even when you do finally get an offer from the council, the competition still isn't won. Basically, I've been on the housing list for 10 years now. Um, basically, I've just had my first offer for a viewing at a flat, so hopefully, fingers crossed, I get it. There's my letter. I couldn't believe it at first. I thought I was actually dreaming. So, yeah, I should frame this, really, shouldn't I? <laughs> With a little bit of luck, it, um, just being me and my little boy Harry moving in there. So, yeah, I'm up against five other applicants today, so I'm hoping they don't really turn up. <laughs> I'm the housing officer for this area. I'll take one or two together to show around. Liz is amongst six fortunate families who beat over 500 others to be shortlisted for a council flat. It's a lovely area, isn't it? Now it will be decided which of them will get the keys. She's number four. If, if the first one takes it, second one, third one, you've got no chance, have you? Yeah. I think unless you're one or two, you ain't really going to get a lot of hope getting one. Each of these families has the right of refusal. They're all invited to be sure someone accepts the flat. It's located on the third floor and has two double bedrooms. On the private market, the rent would be at least £300 per week. But from the council, it's a more affordable £112. Three of the families here to view the flat have been waiting in band two for longer than Liz has. Can I just take first, second and third? They will all need to reject it before she'll be allowed inside to look. Do you have a drink in it, Pat? Here you reckon? Yeah. Do you want to come to the kitchen? I'll show you the kitchen. You ain't got no chance. Brings all your hopes up, isn't it? She's got nothing. She lives with her mum and stays mm -hmm. in the living room. But her mum, like her mum's not really well, is she? Your mum? No, my mum's 69 years old, and I care for her a lot, and. If I do get this, I'm in the middle. I'm not too far away from only five, ten minutes down the road to her. Well, hopefully they said no. You won't know that now, are you? Yeah. Yeah. Can we just sign here for me, please? Okay. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, but, yeah, I'm really kind of annoyed at the moment. Yeah, well. it's really annoyed me. Well, I'm a bit disappointed now. It's been taken. The first applicant took the flat. Ain't, a, ain't, ain't a racial comment, but I had a feeling I'd be the only white person here today taking the view into this flat as well. So 
Yeah, so that's not really big a really big disappointment for me in an area like this. Unless you're one or two on the list, yeah. you've got no chance. I'll just wait. She's going to come home with me now. Yeah, <laughs> go and have a nice cup of tea <laughs> and see my little boy and give him a nice big kiss and cuddle. <laughs> Bullshit. Yeah, it's not, it's not right. I disagree with the whole, the, whole, the whole system. But not every home is accepted quite so easily. There are a variety of different types of property, and not everything is to everyone's taste. Psychedelic, isn't it, really? If it was circles, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> a remarkable 50% of homes that the council offer are refused. People have come here and they want better. It's like you're not really going to get much better. One of the families who bid for these new flats hope to move out of this 16-storey tower. Red one, come on, please. Come on now. I'm waiting for you. I've got three children and me and my husband. Shepu Begum is a housewife. Her husband works in a restaurant kitchen. After 12 years bidding for properties in Band 2, she's now right at the front of the queue. I'm looking for especially a big kitchen. Yes, it's my dream, but I don't know. If I'm lucky enough, I might get it. <laughs> yeah, take the dishes out. In the kitchen, I like uh, with a gas cooker. Is it with a gas cooker, you can see a fire. Electricity, you know, like you can't see properly. This family have already been offered nine properties, but so far, none have come up to scratch. Did you wash your hand? Certain applicants who have a high priority will continually just bid and bid and bid and never accept a property that we offer to them. Red one, come on, please. Didn't like the kitchen cupboards. Don't like the floor it's on. <laughs> Bus stop's too far away. Now, what are they looking for? Have you finished your homework? And my daughter is doing A-level. It's very important. She needs her own room. My son's doing her GCSE. So I want to go to university as well. So if, it's, if I have my own room, it's much more easier for me. It's, a bit, it's, quite, it's quite difficult. Because like, a girl needs her own room. You know, like, if I want to go to sleep, they're going off, like, chatting or they're fighting, so it gets a little bit stressful. And I do get cranky a bit at night. I sleep here. My brother sleeps here. Do we really snore? He snores. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I don't do snore at all. We need more room. There's not enough room in this house. No. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So what would be your dream house then? Oh, my dream is a house with garden. It's a parking place as well. I don't have a car now, but in future I'm you know, thinking to buy a um, car. So I'm just keep bidding. I think this is quite a good place for hobbits. In the last two years, Mike has placed 550 bids for properties. But so far, he's not been offered a thing. It's not good, and it's not good at all. It's not good for my children. I mean, I think they expected something else when they came over. You know, every time I come in here and I look around, I think, you know, really, I, I feel, if I really think about it, I feel as I'm a failure. Mike works 50 hours a week on commission cold calling potential recruits for jobs in sales. Right, I'm a recruiter, I'm a headhunter, and I'm currently working on an assignment which my colleague sent me your CV for. And I just want to know whether you are still looking for a career move. You're OK, are you? OK, lovely. Thank you very much indeed. You know, if you'd, if you'd asked me 20 years ago when I was living in a beautiful flat in Singapore, that I, in 20 years' time I'd be standing in Bethnal Green looking at, with, looking at the type of flats I used to have, dreaming, well, I used to have a flat like that and I didn't have it. The irony, the irony is superb. 
The three-bedroom home Mike's family need would cost him £150 a week from the council, but privately renting the equivalent would cost significantly more. It's an uh, apartment like, you know, 500, 600 a week, two bed nowadays. And yeah. if you go, can I off that? So what happens to all the Posh, posh right? area, can I off this £3,000 a week? <laughs> That's the market, really, isn't it? You can't really argue against the market, unfortunately. If people, if people are prepared to pay for it, they're going to pay for it. There you go. What is social housing for? It's for people that need a safety net. Well, I think I do need a safety net. Uh, I might not sound as... My accent might not sound as though I am, but my circumstances definitely dictate that I am, because that's it. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just really... Get very, it can, it can get very depressing living here, really depressing. Oh, that's nice. £210 a week. It's three bedrooms, flat 19th floor. Uh -huh. 19th floor? Jesus. No. Age price. <laughs> no. Well, beggars can't be choosers, baby. 19th Jesus. floor? Well, come on, guys. In Singapore, they're paying millions for places like that. Uh. We can afford it. OK, shall we apply? Yeah. OK, no, let's no, go no. for it. Bonk. It's a hell of a lot of money, isn't it? Your mum is not well. What's the medical reason? The fastest route to the front of the housing queue is to be awarded Band 1 priority. Many are people assessed as having a medical need for a particular type of home. One, two, three, four, five flights. I used to run up, and like two were dripping. Now, I go down and see as little as often. I was, I was very energetic. I was a scrap man. Shall I go down and wait at the bottom for you? You sure you'll be all right on the... Yeah, yeah. Oh, OK. After a life of hard work, John Davis's health has deteriorated. Oh, wow. Showing off. He's being assessed by an occupational therapist who has placed him in band one. Yeah, you can see that right hip is the problem. Oh. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much for doing that. That's all right, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> OK. What are you thinking about moving now? You want to move within this area? Yeah. Or, yeah. or are you willing to go a little bit further afield? Or? I mean, Sorry. really and truthfully now, I don't want to leave here. You really don't want to leave here? Well, everybody around here. I'll get on with every one of them. Mm. Once you move, all that's gone. Well, it's your choice whether you move or not, but if you do well, want to it, move... it ain't my choice, love. Yeah. The, the, the thing is, I've got no choice. I either stay here and get cooped up like a rabbit... That's the problem. If you stay here, right, you're I'll stuck, move. aren't you? When yeah. it comes to all this yeah. rubbish about bidding, Right. I don't even know the beginning of it. Yeah. Well, once you're on auto bid, it means that every week all the properties, all the one-bedroom properties, ground floor, that you would be eligible for, it will bid on for you automatically. <laughs> all right. All right, you take care. You too. Yeah. See you soon, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Automatic bidding is available to Tower Hamlet's most vulnerable residents. The computer at the council is now choosing properties to bid for on John's behalf. There we go. Um, so it does it all automatically. What it does mean, the downside to it, is that he will not know what's going on in the computer's head, basically. He's determined the criteria that he's looking on, so certain areas geographically, certain types of property, but you won't have time to really check with neighbours and all that, what it's like and whether there's anybody that would be supportive. He has this dilemma as well about moving anyway. He has these, these feelings about, you know, whether he really does want to go or doesn't want to go. But the computer doesn't know all that. Oh, no, 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 it's totally impersonal. That's the problem. And that's a problem with the whole system. It's a problem with everything now. It's getting more and more mechanised, computerised, automatic. I say so when we moved here, it was, it was just a well, I wouldn't say amazing, but you know the room we had was unbelievable. It was, it was great. Tom Jones has to leave his home because it's being demolished to make way for a new estate and private housing. 
The grey blocks, I think they were built in the early 60s. One of the balconies on this block behind you fell, um, and then basically they rebuilt re the building. Well, they tied the ends in. Um, basically, because I think they, the roofs they put on were too heavy. They've never really been looked after, which is a shame, because they're, they're, they're comfortable inside. You know, they're nice big buildings, nice spacious rooms. Everyone who lived here was awarded Band 1 on the waiting list, so they could quickly find somewhere else to live. The trouble is, you, you sort of go out, you come back, and all of a sudden, well, there's another one boarded up, you know, and someone else has gone. It's when they move people on just like that that's... and don't really give you a choice, you know, you've got to go now. So there must have been a few hundred people living on the, just in the grey blocks alone. And now it's pretty much just you. Yeah. <laughs> it's peaceful now, though. Tom is the legal guardian of his two granddaughters. For the past year, they've been looking for a new home. You are a drama queen sometimes. Because everyone goes for the mansion as an ideal house. It's not actually an actually, ideal house. Actually, a little house. cottage like Snow White. That's what I was just about to say, something like that. Like, somewhere where there's a park, nice people around the place. That's the letter seeking um, possession. Tom's already been offered nine properties, but he's turned them all down. The landlord intends to demolish the whole of the dwelling house. I won't get out until I get what I want or what I need. And I need a free bedroom. I want somewhere that I can put my feet up without touching the other wall, you know what I mean? It's, and that's how they seem to be building them. I'll move tomorrow if the right property comes along. Born and bred bow boy, you know, it's, it's the area I know, the area I like. Two grandchildren go to school locally. I don't want to stay up staying here pulling them out of school and moving here and moving there. I suppose I've dug my feet in a little bit. It's been a week since Mike placed his latest bids for property. He's now calling the council to find out the result. Hello, Michael. Yeah, I mean, this is Mike Kemp, and uh, I'm just phoning up uh, about my where I am on the housing list. Oh, you just want to check your bid positions? Okay, there was Orkney Court. You were placed 620. Um, I must advise you, though, when I say 620, that, that means there's 619 people in yeah. front of you. But you're right, remember, you were 1,000. So what do you reckon another year or so? I'll be honest with you, Mr. Kemp, the average waiting time for free beds used to be five years. But there's been a large jump in applicants going on the housing list, especially in front of you with urgent health priorities. And that may have extended your wait time to maybe another year. Right. OK, Michael, thank you very much indeed for your help and advice. And anyway, it's not bad. I'm getting up there a bit. So uh, uh, I'll give another call in three months to see where we are then. Really OK, then. Take care. Thanks Bye -bye. for ringing. You're welcome. Bye-bye. I'm gutted, actually. I'm pretty gutted, actually. <laughs> You're looking at six years in total now. Um, by which time my daughter will be, what, 22? So, uh, you know, I'll be off the list again. So there's, there's actually, there's no way. There's actually, to be quite frank with you, I cannot see any way that I will get social housing in Tower Hamlets. That's no, just, just a, a long old trudge. Long old trench. For some applicants, the system has better news. This is from Tower Hamlets. They offered me house. I get so excited. We say that I am. Um, is it a house with a garden? No, I haven't got any house with garden. <laughs> this is a flat on third floor with three bedrooms. But Tom has struck the jackpot. He's being offered what everyone wants. A house with its own front door. It has three bedrooms, a generous living room with a well-tended garden at the rear. To buy it would cost around £385,000, but the council is offering a lifetime tenancy at £134 a week. Your position is number one on the list. 
but size of the rooms, gardens, you know, potential, whether it's decorated or, or not, I haven't got a clue. You would be expected to make a decision at the time of viewing. I think that's a bit hard because it's like a snap, snap judgment. You know, you, you go into somewhere and you're, you're looking at it for maybe 10, 15 minutes. All things are going through your head. Will this fit? Won't that fit? It's a crucial decision. In two days' time, both families must view the properties. But Shapu and Tamana are taking an early look. Did you like the area? Yeah, obviously. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's up, isn't it? Yeah. It's high, isn't it? Yeah, if you go all the way to the top. Yeah, no lift. You have to check the stairs, isn't it? And how do you feel about the idea of the third floor? I'll be all right walking up. She <laughs> won't be. It's quite high, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Exercise. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I do like it. It's nice buildings, isn't it? It's new. <laughs> it's hard though. It is. Yeah. Hard decision, isn't it? But just think about it. What are we gonna do, Mama? Yeah. What are you gonna do, not me? For John, the decision to leave his home is difficult. He's lived in his flat for 30 years. <sighs> Shit off, or you take some money. There's me at work, cutting down a scrap factory. He moved here with his wife Mary in 1984. How long ago did she die now? She died on the uh, 4th of May, 2002. Did she like this house? Yeah, she loved it. We always said we'd never leave here. We liked it too much. And she moved in here, she died from here. And who knows, I might end up going the same way. It's taken a month, but the auto bidding system has matched John to a property. It's quite a little ways away. It's not with his neighbours. It's quite close to the canal. So quite a good location really for an elderly person. John will be able to view the flat once it's been assessed by the maintenance team. Oh, for fuck's sake. They've offered me a, a property over at Edmont Close, E1. Fuck that's where that is. Ground floor, one bedroom flat. All right, still got some bits and pieces to clear in this one. How much do you know about that property? Nothing, not a thing. You see, yeah, we've still got to clear some furniture in this one. Mm. Should be able to just freshen that up. Mm. It's mostly cosmetic. There's a roach that's still there, dead one. Get it all clean up. I'll be catch 22. Do all of that, I don't know Do you think you're going to take a look at it? Oh, I dare say I'll have to, wouldn't I? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Wilson. The property the computer system chose for John has been cleared out and refurbished. It's a one bedroom flat with recently fitted kitchen. On the private market, the weekly rent would be £265. Council would charge £122. Today is the viewing day, but John has stayed at home. Uh, well, once we finally got the address of this uh, offer, I was able to look up what was known on the system about this particular property. And it was said that it had at least three steps into it. And the whole reason he was looking at moving was because of difficulty on steps and stairs. Um, and it was just not worth dragging him out to see a property that really would nowhere near meet his medical need. Um, this is the entrance. 
Unfortunately, the lift doesn't go to the first floor. It goes to the above one. So it's just that stairs? I can't do the stairs too much, you know. All oh, right, OK. Viewing instead of John is the second placed applicant, 83-year-old Gertrude Palmer. No, I don't. Okay, I have arthritis, you know, and the knees swell. It's swelling. <coughs> Gertrude has waited six years in band two in an overcrowded flat with her daughter's family. She doesn't have the medical priority awarded to John. Come in. Come in. Fine. In system the way she is, she's not she's not in need of a ground floor. She may wish to have that. It will make her life easier. But with her ability it doesn't fall under the criteria of a ground floor need. So who was living here before? It was an elderly gentleman who was living here. He died? He died. Always. <laughs> uh, I like it. Yeah, but it's the stairs. I like it, but it's the stairs, you know. Right, OK. So You're not... Uh, I will have to do, you know, my legs with yeah. the arthritis, you know, oh, come up yeah. in my back. I'm 83, you know. Right. And then I'm not keeping well, you know. I tell you what, I will. So happy that you I will, like I will take a chance. Okay. But after I can't manage, will you? Will will the council? I don't know much about the council. Yeah. Will the council offer me a ground floor or something? And I'm going to be honest with you. You still have to go on the waiting list. Again. Yeah, and you still have to bid. If you want to move again, you have to go through the process of being on the register oh, and applying for the ground for a property. Oh, my goodness. Do you still want to think about it or you make your mind up now? Okay, I'll take you it. Will. Yeah. Congratulations. Okay. I will contact you. I'm not, not sure. It's a nice outcome. Yeah. All life. <laughs> When you get old, it's a, it's a funny thing, isn't Aww. it? When I was young, I just run the stairs down. I'm so disappointed, Shelley, because they said... Because of the stairs. It's a ground Aww. floor, you know. I know, it's just... All John can do is continue to wait in the hope a ground floor property near his neighbours becomes free. It's a shame that when they built these flats, they didn't put lifts in them. Well, surely they should realise that there's going to be people that are going to be living here till the day they die, like a lot of them have done. When they built places like this and they, and they built it on two levels, there was plenty of social housing then. Yeah. So they could, they could afford to say, all right, that don't work for him no more. We'll put him, but move you, not far, but move you within the same community, yeah. but into a more appropriate place. I just, I just, I do honestly think that the, the single most life-changing thing that's happened that I can see over the last 30, 40 years was Margaret Thatcher's right to buy, in terms of smashing communities. Yeah. Because like I said to you, you've got, you've now got Chaos, and it is chaos in shoes. But I don't know, it, it, to me, it just, it used to work. So yeah. why doesn't it work anymore? Werner House, you came at 264. Um, Miller House, you came 1050. Another one, 1050. Another one, 1050. Average waiting time for clients who require a two-bedroom place, you could wait a minimum of up to five years. No, I'm not. I'm serious, yes. We have 24,000 people on our housing list. And as you can, and you can see by the amount of properties that come available each week, it's not a lot of people that are getting rehoused each month, is it? Why don't you just build more properties? Why don't you just build more properties? Money. Why don't we build more properties? Money. Money and space. And, and space, of course, drives money. There isn't very much space in town hamlets. Um, and whilst there is an, a continual programme of redevelopment, 
Typically that relates to knocking down inadequate housing and replacing it with good quality housing. This block is part of a £200 million regeneration programme. 932 people bid for this flat, but Shepu's family came in first place. The property is a light and spacious three-bedroom flat featuring two bathrooms and a well-appointed kitchen with integrated appliances. On the same estate, the private market equivalent is priced at almost half a million, but it's available to the family for a more reasonable £178 a week. It's actually a very nice new, new um, development. I can get disappointed as well if they're not happy with their especially a place like this, people have refused them. Are you all here? But generally, you people appreciate it and you get a big hug at the end of the day, so... It does feel nice, it feels nice. There we go. Start from this end. This is the main bedroom. If you want to go in, all the rooms come with um, blinds in. So we're asking you not to put up any curtains as yet. Yeah. So that's in all the rooms. In here, you've got a TV area and a telephone socket. Is it every room or? Not every room. Oh, just. Not every room. And we've got the living room. Sitting room, living room. So what we've done, we've gifted the gas hob and oh, the grill and the cooker is electric. Really nice, I like yeah, it. It's, it's nice, isn't it? Yeah, you like it. Nice, yeah. yeah. And it's spacious as well, isn't it? Yeah, space, yeah. very yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. Really like the house, but one problem. Okay. The problem is for car free. I, I know. know it is car free before. Yeah. But I did wrote a letter to Mayor. Can you, you know, give me a par permission for I can have a parking place? Yeah. So the mayor will then have to council contact the council, and the thing is, council has told everybody else here no. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, if they if they refuse and said no, you can't have parking, you're going to refuse the house. Yes. What they have to understand, it makes no difference to me whether they take it or not. I just get nomina another nomination and show somebody else who is more than happy to take it. The house that Tom is being offered received 1,663 bids. In case he turns it down, the council have invited the second place family who have band one medical priority. You must come and be a Yeah. Yeah. All right. Looking forward to viewing. So is it just you three moving in then? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's, a he's in a block. He's been moved from here. Yeah, he's been knocked down. He's been knocked down. So you're the last one's left there, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Tell me why you guys want this house. Um, basically because our little boy, he's got um, autism, so, and he's got no sense of danger. And currently we live on a first floor flat, um, and he's trying to climb over the balcony. He needs his own bedroom, really, and his own space. This is the garden, so you got a garden? Ooh, so they're happy with the garden. That's nice. So facing. So you don't you don't do any no new kitchen or nothing? Are you in the throes of redecorating it or? No, unfortunately we do not redecorate it. So how am I supposed to decorate it? Well you don't get a grant or anything no, towards no. it? Everyone's got their own little part of life that's hard, haven't they? Um, but like I say, once we get our home, that's hopefully for life, it, things will be easier. Yeah, they're happy. <laughs> right. <laughs> Did you like it? Yeah, it's really nice. Is it? I've already decided which bedroom Oh, yeah, well, that's it. Yeah. You want it? Yeah. Would you? Yes. Yeah? Yes. You yeah. sure? Yes. Yeah, yeah. 
Sorry. Sorry. Cheers, mate. And you. I hope you find something that suits. Oh, thank you. Good luck at the course. Well done. I hope you stick a little bit nicely. Take care. Thank you, Lindsay. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Do these people really have a choice about where they live? No. They have a choice about the property that we're offering. To, to accept or not to accept. But that choice only comes when you're at the front of the queue. For the majority of people in the queue, they have no choice whatsoever. And they don't have the choice of stepping outside of that queue because the private sector isn't a viable alternative, home ownership isn't a viable alternative, even shared ownership isn't a viable alternative. So for the majority of people, they don't have choice. But this isn't a housing choice service, this is an allocations service, and in that we give some people choice when they're at the front of the queue. So what do you need in order to really have choice? Money. True choice. Support information for the issues raised can be found online at channel4.com slash support. The investigations into the country's biggest scam rings next tonight. Crime doesn't pay when you crash for cash. There are five million homes in Britain provided at reduced rent through local councils. That's not what you would expect coming into a council property. Is that you're not really going to get much better. But four and a half million people are competing for the few vacancies that come up. You ain't got no chance. What I'm in my head to give me a bigger house where I will live with my family. These people are hoping to get one of these properties. I like that one. It looks okay, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, that looks really nice. But which of them needs it the most? I've been issued an eviction notice. I've got to get out. I'm not asking for nothing spectacular. Just somewhere with enough space for us to actually start making a life for ourselves. People are having to wait an average of between five to six years. The system will decide who will get what they're looking for. I'm looking for especially a big kitchen. If I'm lucky enough, I might get it. <laughs> 19th floor. Uh -huh. 19th floor. Beggars can't be choosers, baby. Not all of these people will be given a home. There's going to be losers and there's going to be winners. There's a shortage of homes. This is the fact of life. This is what's happening in England. We can't help everyone. This East London Council housing office is under siege. Now, we're a nation of people of queue, aren't we? We are a nation of people of queue. And if we can see that that's a legitimate queue, as much as it's frustrating to be at the end of it, if we can see, A, that there's no one cutting in, and B, that we're moving slowly, there's a lot more tolerance. Tower Hamlets is one of the poorest and most overcrowded boroughs in the country. And the council faces a never-ending stream of people looking for a home. What I'm in my head 
to give me a bigger house where I will live with my okay, family. I this and this on this one, they sleep on the same bed and they don't sleep all night. My wife have to push this all night. I'm sleeping on the floor. Do you know, I don't think he's unreasonable for somebody to say I'm in housing need. Can you, can you sort of address it, really? And I was told when I first joined the waiting list that it was only a five-year wait and okay. I've been waiting ten. Yeah. Is it because of uh, she was white skin and we are Asian? And why did she get three women? Nothing to do with it. Why did she get three women? Is this there is no there? difference. Equally, it's not unreasonable for a local authority facing so many cuts, has such a dense population and limited supply to say no. I'll say again, we do not take into consideration ages. Two children, same sex, share a room. I can't change that policy, we just implement them. There are 24,000 households queuing for a property. Council officers have the challenge of working out who's the most in need. Applicants that apply to the council's housing list are assessed, placed in the band. The band determines how urgent their housing application is. The bands are numbered one to four. Band one is the highest priority for emergencies, and band four for those who have the least urgent need. I wouldn't say to you that we'll be, we'll be able to rehouse you because we wouldn't. You're in the lowest band. We don't have any say over that. Central government has said this. We just administer it, i.e. we do the paperwork. In the average week, 60 more households join the waiting list. But only 40 properties become available to give out. Properties due to be advertised include this two-bedroom flat on the third floor of a 1930s council block, this three-bedroom house with garden, a rare find in inner London, and this brand-new three-bedroom flat provided by a not-for-profit housing association. All will be advertised at a rent of around one-third of the private market rate. Michael Kemp. Michael Kemp to interim 13, please. Mike Kemp is attempting to rebuild his life after a failed Far East property venture left him in financial ruin. Good morning. Michael, yeah? Yes. Uh, please take a seat. Thank you. You are Mr. Uh, Moy, M O Y. Oh, are you from Kenya? I'm not from Kenya, no. Do you, you live in. A housing association property, is it? Uh, yeah, supported housing, yeah. Supported housing. Hello there. Welcome. It's a bit, a bit of a tight squeeze. Come on in. Uh, this is my children's bedroom. My daughter and my son, they share a room. So my daughter sleeps down here on the, on the uh, lower side and my son sleeps up top. Mike has been placed in band two because his flat is overcrowded. It was intended for a single person, but Mike's family moved from the Philippines and there are now four of them in two small rooms. The most important thing is we're together. We're happy. Happy family again. We sleep in one roof again. This is the lounge. This is where we live. And so the family, really, we spend a lot of our time here. Uh, my daughter tends to do her homework in there and everything, and we use all the space that we can. Um, which is fine, but uh, it doesn't, you know, it's, it's ridiculous really, we should have a family area, you know. So if I may ask at this stage why you require house advice? Because I've been, a, I've, been off, I've, been, I've been issued an eviction notice for overcrowding. I've got to get out. All right. Did you read the contract before you signed it, though? Yeah. OK, so you, obviously you were aware at the time that uh, that particular accommodation, our supported housing, was only meant for you and you alone, yeah? Yes. Yeah. OK. Do you receive housing benefit or...? I receive child benefit and I receive some t child tax, tax credits. And the rent is? 600 and something. So, let's say approximately 600 odd pounds. 
and my salary is just about the same, so I'm, I'm dying on my feet at the moment. Okay. Have you tried to search for properties to rent in the private rented sector? Uh, yes, I have, but there's no way I can afford it. Okay. I do appreciate your concerns about affordability, and it's obviously going to be difficult if you decide to stick to Tar Hamlet. Thank you very much, Mr. Moy. You're welcome. You're welcome. There are 9,000 other households with the same priority that Mike has. He has a few weeks before he's evicted to find a new home. What are his prospects of getting a property? Well, unfortunately, very, very bleak, though. It's, it's, it's not looking too good in the short term. There could be the possibility of a property becoming available. However, most of the clients we deal with tend to find it very difficult securing alternative accommodation, uh, either through th their own efforts or through the council. Each week, the available properties are advertised by the council. All those on the waiting list can go online and make an electronic bid. That's the new build that we see around here, around near my friend's house. Mm. It's a two-bed, three-person, two-bedroom, yeah. perfect for us, lifetime home, third flat, floor. third floor, new build. When a client places a bid, what they're actually doing is stating that they wish to be considered for the property that has been advertised. That is what a bid is, basically. So your request has been recorded, you will be contacted if you are successful. If two applicants from the same band bid for, an a, bid for a property, the, the applicant who's been in the band the longest will be offered the property. I'm not asking for nothing spectacular. I'm not, not really begging for a garden or a, or a balcony or nothing like that. Just somewhere...